Hello and welcome to Land Rover BAR headquarters located in Old Portsmouth. Today's show is one of many brought to you by the University of Portsmouth's CCI TV. I'm Gemma Frith. And I'm Mark Henderson. This week's show is particularly special as we are coming to you not from the Eldon Building, but from this incredible facility with this amazing view <laughs> to tell you all about Land Rover BAR's team's journey to bring the cup home. Coming up in today's show, we'll be talking, taking a look at the excitement that has come to Portsmouth since the announcement of the Louis Vuitton America's Cup World Series event in 2014, as well as talking to some members of the Land Rover BAR team, reflecting on past events and discussing what can we expect in the coming year. As we know, Portsmouth has a great maritime heritage, so we'll be delving deeper, looking at why this city is the perfect place to host such an event and why the team felt this was a natural home for a permanent base in the UK. But before that, let's talk a bit about the history of the America's Cup. In 1851, on an afternoon when Queen Victoria was watching a sailing race, a schooner named America sailed past the Royal Yacht stationed in the Solent between the Isle of Wight and the south coast of England and claimed first position. That day, the yacht, America, representing the Young New York Yacht Club, would go on to beat the best the British could offer and win the Royal Yacht Squadron's £100 Cup. This was more than a simple boat race, however, as it symbolised a great victory for the new world over the old, a triumph that unseated Great Britain as the world's undisputed maritime power. The New York Yacht Club Commodore, John Cox Stevens, donated the trophy to the club and stated the trophy was to be a perpetual challenge cup for friendly competition between nations. With it originally named the £100 Cup when it was first placed in competition, the Silver Trophy was then renamed America's Cup after the winning schooner America. The America's Cup is the oldest international trophy within world sport and is arguably one of the most difficult trophies in sport to win. In over 150 years since the first race began, only four nations have won. USA, New Zealand, Australia and Switzerland. Over this period of time, sailing has progressed into an extreme sport in its own right. When you consider that each boat has a platform that is over 45 feet long, the equivalent of four family cars, then there's the wing mast. This can reach up to 70 feet in height. That's the same as a seven-storey building and not forgetting that the boat can travel up to speeds of 50 miles an hour. A crew, each with their own significant role, controls all of this whilst out in the unpredictable sea. Well, before we find out more about the team and meet some of the Land Rover BAR crew, let's see some of the team in action. It's hard to think that that was only last year. Now, talking of crew, Sir Ben Ainsley, a four-time Olympic gold medalist and the world's most successful Olympic sailor, launched Ben Ainsley Racing on June the 10th, 2014, in the presence of the Duchess of Cambridge. At the 34th America's Cup in 2013, Ben Ainsley joined Team Oracle USA as tactician when the team were 8-1 down. With his help, they sailed to victory from the brink of defeat in one of the greatest comebacks in sporting history. Ben now aims to develop and lead a British entry that is capable of bringing the prestigious trophy home. 
The team itself is made up of some of the best British and international sailors, designers, builders and racing support. In April 2014, Ben Ainsley announced plans to build a team headquarters within the River Solent area. But you're probably all wondering how the headquarters ended up here in Portsmouth. Well, joining us now to provide some more information about the base and what goes into making this whole operation run smoothly is Andy Hindley. Thank you so much for joining us today, Andy. Really appreciate it. So if you could start off by telling us a little bit about your job here at uh, Land Rover BAR. So I'm the Chief Operating Officer and the Chief Finance Officer, so I look after the general operations for the team and then just manage all the finance, make sure they spend the money in the right way. Okay. Is that, <laughs> is that job. Is, yeah, is it a difficult job? Is it? It's not easy, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. I mean, we could spend a lot of money. Um, we could spend more than we have really easily, so it's about spending wisely. So you have to balance like what, what you're spending the money on? Like, yeah, there's certain things that everything. you have to spend money on, and then there's things you want to spend money on. Um, and the wish list is huge, and yeah. we could spend a lot more than we have, okay. uh, so you've just got to control that. Is it, um, is it difficult when you hear about the other team spending? Is, like, do, you, do you hear about that, or is it all about yourself? Uh, and, like... They spy on us, and we spy on them. Um, that's been going on in the cup for a very long time. <laughs> so we do look at what they're doing and we may change our plan. But to be honest, we, we've got a set of designers who are pretty, pretty straight on what they want. They know where they want to take the design program and mm. they don't want to be distracted by somebody else unless it is an amazing revelation that someone's come up with something fantastic. Yeah. We haven't seen that, so we think we're doing a good job. Um, Fantastic. Why was Portsmouth chosen as the location for the base? So when we started, as you just said a second ago, we looked around the Solent, we found five different locations that we thought would be suitable, and then we analysed them very carefully to pick the best. And actually Portsmouth came out as the best. Um, it's not the best at everything, but it ticks all the right boxes, and when you averaged all the scores out, it came out top by quite some margin. So it was, uh, it was a very, very logical decision to come here. Yeah. Uh, the council were very supportive. They gave us uh, they gave us everything we needed, and, and so at the end, the decision was quite easy. Yeah, perfect. So, um, how has this building the H um, the headquarters here benefited the community? So, um, we've added a lot of impact, economic impact to the area. Yeah. Um, in our first year here, we had a KPMG did a study for us, and um, we we added thirty eight million to the community of wow. Portsmouth. <laughs> That just just in the first year yeah. and over our campaign life we expect to bring just under a hundred million um, positive impact <laughs> to Portsmouth and the region to Hampshire so uh, there's a huge benefit to the community in that respect um, but but if you take it back from just the finances then we've had an opportunity for people to be involved you know yeah. we, we, we've helped the local businesses um, we've employed quite a lot of local people yeah. and um, we've got more coming the events for instance yeah, because um, I guess what it's become now is it's become a, like renowned in Portsmouth that you come here, you know mm. the sailing team are here, if you see what mm -hmm. I mean. In the, in the same way you come to Portsmouth to visit Gunwharf Quays, you know that this place is here, and I guess that's really what keeps it going. Yeah, and we had a, you know, we lift the boat, you probably see in the background, the boat's lifted out uh, in and out of the water here yeah, yeah, every yeah. time we go sailing. And people come just to watch that. In fact, the yeah. other day, we spoke to a couple from Nottingham, and their son, uh, it, was, it was during the half term, their son was fascinated by the project. So they drove down from Nottingham just to see the boat being <laughs> wow. lifted in and out of the water. Uh, and that's, that's what it is. It's inspiration. Yeah, it is, it yeah. is of huge interest to people, both in Portsmouth and clearly mm. across, the, across the UK. So that's great. Yeah, I mean, I like, like, even just out there looking for us, it's uh, breathtaking. So thank you. I mean... That's yeah. so interesting. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you so much for us today. We really appreciate no it. No problem. Thank that was much. all very interesting. <laughs> it's great to find out a little bit more about the headquarters and everything that goes on here. Earlier in the month, we met with a few other members of the Land Rover BAR team to see what else goes on behind the scenes to make this team successful. Let's take a look at what they had to say. I'm Tom Cheney. I lead uh, the data architecture team, which is part of the performance and analysis team. Uh, we help the design team and the sailing team um, capture data and uh, compare what happened on the water to what the design team predicted would happen. I've lived in Portsmouth for about 10 years. I, I came here to go to university uh, and then since university I've worked for a number of uh, marine businesses in, in, the, in the area. Uh, my name is Ben Williams and my role at Land Rover BAR is essentially I'm in charge of uh, human performance. Uh, before coming here I worked with the uh, Abu Dhabi Ocean Racing Team um, 
as a strength and conditioning coach prior to their uh, around the world race and before that I was working with uh, Dean Stoneman, a Red Bull Junior um, Formula Racing driver. Our training volume all depends on what, um, what cycle we're in. Uh, at the moment we're in um, quite a high volume, so somewhere between 12 and 15 hours a week. Um, I guess on average throughout the year we would average somewhere between 10 and 15 hours a week physical training, that's before the guys step on the boat and do any uh, sailing load. It's such a team effort, um, just having to have the design team talking well to the sailing team uh, and we rely so heavily on our big shore team here, you know, getting the boats going sailing and building the boats and keeping them running, they're such you know, high performance machines, uh, everyone just has to work so tightly. It's a huge team effort, you can't rely on one guy to, to train a team of 12, um, there's so much to look at. Um, we have a consultant nutritionist, a consultant doctor, a consultant physio um, and we also have a permanent intern with us. So from a human performance team there's quite a lot going on behind the scenes. You know the lads may come in and do a session but the reality of that session is 10 hours worth of planning, 3 or 4 hours worth of analysis from previous sessions. Uh, it's a huge team effort, we put a lot of effort into making sure we don't miss anything. Um, and essentially, you know, we do everything we can to get those guys on the podium from a physical point of view. Uh, there aren't really any other teams like Calandra of VAR. Um, I think we're quite different in, in what we're trying to do here and uh, trying to form a, a sort of solid base here for the long term. Uh, a lot of the other British America's Cup teams have been quite short-lived and have gone to the venue and tried to do a specific campaign, uh, whereas what we're doing here is you know, forming a proper long-term base in Portsmouth um, and really providing some sort of security and um, long-term goals, which is great for everyone in the team and it's also great for, for Portsmouth and the local area. So I think for me, the really important thing about being a Land Rover BAR employee is um, the diversity um, in your role, the bit being, you know, being able to step out of that role and help in other areas. Um, and all club together as a, as a new small team in this, um, in this sporting environment to making sure we're doing as much as we can to get those guys onto the best boat we can in the best physical condition we can um, at the right time to give them the best opportunity to, to, uh, to get onto that podium and compete at the highest level. Having seen the headquarters for myself and having met some of the team members, it's incredible to think how much work goes into making this come together. From marketing to training, engineering to design and all the other elements which happen right here in this building. It was also reassuring to see University of Portsmouth graduates like Tom being successful and working for a team like Land Rover BAR. With the rigorous training schedule that the human performance team has created, let's hope that the sailing team are as prepared as they can be for the rest of the year's events. And who knows, we may even get to meet some of the sailing team later on in this show. Now, we are told to stay out of certain areas of the building mm. due to some top secret developments being made to the new boat. Joining us now to give us an insight into this is David Markey. So, thanks for joining us today, Dewey. We really appreciate it. But firstly, before we get into all the top secrets, can you tell us a little bit about your job role here at um, BAR? Yes, so I'm a performance and simulation engineer in the design team. Um, so we are basically responsible for getting all the boat from the data and trying and analyze what is happening on the water and developing new algorithms to get more insight into how we can sail this boat better and how we can design the boat better. Oh, oh, okay, so, so, you, so you, you calculate everything and that's how you make the changes, I guess, like but by seeing what will work and what won't work. Yes, correctly, and we have multiple departments in our uh, performance team where the performance gets focused on the data from the water and the simulation team does the same thing with, uh, with mathematical models. And obviously we want to align those two and that will help us to, to build new, new things and to build a better um, design for our final race boat. That's okay. amazing. Yeah, that is amazing. Yeah. So, it's, so it's your decisions that based on how they spend the yeah, money, basically. that's fantastic. We, we try to believe. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah exactly. Um, do you ever find uh, people possibly from other teams, we spoke to Andy earlier about them sending spies to get information on what you're making, like how do you avoid that? Do you find them doing uh, that? Yeah, yeah we, we are being watched. Yeah, I remember particularly when we launched our second test boat, yeah. um, a lot of people popping up around with like cameras uh, and trying, yeah. trying to <laughs> take some pictures. And it, it feels a bit strange though, but at the same time, you know, it does 
you do realize that you're actually doing cool stuff, you know, and yeah, other yeah, people are interested in, in what's happening. Um, obviously, there is a courtesy between the teams, so they are taking distance and, you know, it, but it's as much as what we would be doing with, with other teams. And it's a competition after all, so you want to know what the other teams yeah. are doing and you want to know what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are and how we can beat them, obviously. I get, yeah, I'm sorry. I guess That's it's a compliment okay. to you then if they are yeah. spying on you because it means you're obviously doing a good job because otherwise they wouldn't need to spy on you. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> They're worried. Exactly. <laughs> I was going to say, you said a second there that, um, that we send out spies as well. So are we, are we checking up on the other teams as much as they're checking up on us? Um, I don't know how, how much they are checking up yeah. on us, but obviously we want to know what's, what's going on in the, in the other teams and mm. we want to know if they have thought about something new that, that we haven't. Um, it's quite a difficult, a difficult game though, because you might be putting a lot of effort on something we see, yeah. whilst for them it might just be a little simple decision that doesn't make sense, that you can start thinking about why are, are they doing that, yeah. how are they doing this, but you, it is important to not put too much emphasis on other people's doing and focusing on, on your own strength. So it's a, it's a very difficult, difficult game. Yeah, I was saying, I guess it's like um, golf. You know how golf, they say, all the players say they play against themselves. It's yeah. about you getting your boat the best, not worrying about other people all yes, the time. Yes, exactly. So it must be like that. That's, um, it's so good, isn't it? Yeah, um, definitely. What, what, got you, what got you interested in this role? Like, how did you become to work for the team? What, did, what got um, you into this role in the first place? Well, my, my interest was in, in sailing, obviously. I've been a, a sailor myself my whole youth and oh, okay. and trying to get that combined with engineering mm -hmm. i i try to understand what's going on when you're sailing what's going on with the wind what's going on with the water and that that drove me to to studying actually the fluid dynamics and to see what's what's going on and obviously um, the america's cup is the highest the yeah. highest achievable yeah, it's, wow. um, and, it, and it's so cool to be involved with, with a british team yeah. i imagine it's quite exciting to be working here especially if it's something that's a passion of yours sailing do you find it's quite exciting when you come across new things and you make uh, new discoveries especially with looking at the um, when you're looking at the water is that is that quite exciting yeah it, d it definitely is and you see you know we're surrounded with all these people who are so so bright and who are have so much dedication to, to what we're trying to do and actually being able to be part of this and, yeah. and actually having an influence on, yeah, on yeah. Where, we, where we're going is, is really cool. Yeah. That's really cool, yeah. Do, do you think that um, because it is such a secret environment and because you're making changes and you're trying to keep it secret, do you think working as a team is even more important in this industry? Because yeah. like, you have to trust your team members, I guess, because you're all dealing with top secret stuff every day, yeah. a lot of information. So I guess team is even more important than, than maybe in any other sport. Yeah, yeah exactly. And because everything changes also so quickly, we have to be so quick on, on, on the ball that yeah. every single day we are doing different things and, and you need to work together. And obviously, if we want to get to the best result, then we need to make sure that we pick the brains of everyone and we get the best thing out of everyone to, to get um, to, to a good solution. Yeah. So, very quickly to finish, do you think we can bring the cup home this year? That's a silly question, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. we're here to win. We're here to win it, and if we, I mean, if we wouldn't think we'd win it, then we wouldn't, wouldn't yeah. be here. And that's, that's the, the real strength, I think, from, from Land Rover Ben Ainsley Racing. No, that, I mean, I think yeah. we win it. So, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm on your team. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank Thanks you so much. so much, David, for joining us. It's very interesting to hear what goes on in this magnificent building. It certainly is. Now we've spoken about the events and the history and we've seen behind the scenes. But before we move on, why don't we see what happens when we met up with two members of the sailing team to find out more about their love for the sport. My name's Freddie Carr and uh, my role within the sailing team is I'm, I'm a grinder, so I'm like one of the, the powerhouses, the energy on the boat. Um, and on, on the AC45, I'm the floater, the guy that runs around pulling all the ropes really hard. My parents were always looking to get me out of the house because I had a bit of, fair bit of energy and, and I grew up on the south coast, I grew up real close to Portsmouth and uh, obviously the, all the coastline that we've got around the south coast and the, the sort of sailing opportunities around here um, I got chucked in a boat to, to get rid of some of my energy and it, it went from there. I started off just messing around, um, capsizing, going for a swim and then I enjoyed it more and more and started racing and before I knew it I, I was going alright in the racing. So uh, yeah, it kind of developed from having fun to turning into sport for me. Best part of sailing professionally 
it's simply just going sailing every day. I uh, was so lucky that the sport is as fun as and, and exciting as it's ever, ever been. Um, these boats are doing 40, 50 miles an hour and it's, it's turned into an extreme sport and uh, I think that's great for the sport of sailing. It's such an exciting time to be involved within the sport. My name is Paul Campbell James and I'm the wing trimmer. Um, I'm basically the throttle man, so my job is to make sure that the wing is at the right angle of attack and it's in the right shape at all times to make the boat go as fast as possible. Um, my old man um, went to the Olympics when I was one, um, so he got me into it really early and just through um, the RYA youth scheme and into optimists and 420s and yeah, started out like that just around the local clubs and then into the more national events. Well, the best part of sailing profession is I get to do my hobby as a job. You know, and I absolutely love going sailing every day. Oh, without a doubt, you know, without a doubt, what we're trying to do here, like you don't need any motivation to come to work every day. Looking at trying to win the America's Cup for Great Britain for the first ever time is, is just something that you dream of growing up. And like I said, sailing the coolest boats that have ever been built with your mates. So this course is just amazing. The fact that I get to sail with my friends um, in this amazing base, in these amazing boats every day, the, the hard work is a very small price to pay for the privilege to be able to do that every day. I think for me, the, the reason why I did well in the sport is just because I absolutely love it. So just to make sure that at all times you're having fun and you'll go forward from there. I guess if you're starting out in sailing, it's really easy very early on to just focus in on one kind of boat and, and it's great to have dreams of going to the Olympics in those dinghy classes, but I attacked it from the other point of view where I went and tried to sail as much as possible and learn a really broad base of sailing skills. And then later on in life, when, you, when you're looking to potentially get employed as a professional sailor, you, you have a lot more to offer a, a team like this. It, it's great to focus in if you want to go down that Olympic route, but for me it was about diversifying and, and learning loads of different skills. What an incredible team. Here with us now to give us more of an insight into what has happened in the events over the last year and to tell us a little bit more about the team itself, it's Dan Wilkinson. Thank you so much, Joyce. Yeah, so welcome, Dan. Dan. Um, <laughs> what's your role within the Louis Vuitton America's Cup World Series and what does it entail? Yeah, so my role is um, all about marketing the event, essentially, and the communications of the event. We've obviously got a lot of people to get down to and buy tickets to come and watch uh, Land Rover BAR and all the other teams down on South Sea Common. So we've got to sell about 40,000 tickets. So wow. I'm generally in charge yeah. of, you know, the social media side, m the marketing side, advertising, marketing partnerships, and really promoting the event right across the country to get both sailing fans and non-sailing fans really involved in the event and wanting to come down, buy that ticket, and come watch the action. Yeah. Do you? Oh, sorry, me. You go. Oh, do you get a lot of interest from the whole of the country, or is it? Or is there a lot of people coming here from Portsmouth? Well, it actually was really interesting. So last year's event, we obviously had around. Uh, I think we actually sold about 160,000 tickets. But 160, yeah, That's we had free crazy. tickets and paid tickets. So you're obviously good at your job then. Well, yeah. maybe, maybe. But uh, you know, out of those numbers, only about 30% were from Portsmouth. Oh, really? So the heat map that was right across the country was around 70, 70, 65 to 70% wow, of people came impressive. from right across yeah. the country. So it just shows you the, the interest in the event and you know, it's sort of spectacular boats, oh, yeah. the racing action, they want to come down and see it. Um, Fantastic. Yeah, when it comes to marketing, like you said, you deal with the social media side and stuff like that. I guess it's really like complicated for you now because in the past marketing was marketing, but now there's so many different social media sites. Is it? Do you do different things on different sites, or is yeah, it all covered in one? Exactly. So you know, areas like Instagram, that's the younger market. Yeah. You know, it's a lot. It's it's, it's all about the imagery, the short videos, getting people engaged. Yeah. Then you've got um, Facebook, which is more traditional, and it's actually you know I, I was the youngster when I went into Facebook, <laughs> but, but now it's actually the more of my age, like keeping it, and it's obviously an older age group now. So for us, actually, the, the probably the, the, the key age is 30 plus. So Facebook's our arena, really. Yeah. Um, and then Twitter's a lot more just engaging with people at the media, what's going on, and more of a news update rather than a yeah. hard sell. Yeah. I mean, I know that in Portsmouth, this is such a big deal to everyone oh, yeah. like that. Do you, um, do you find, just saying what you're saying about Facebook and stuff, your area is 30 plus, but are you doing stuff to try and encourage young people as well? Like yeah, exactly. And, you know, we'll, we'll talk about more about this year's event, but one of the key days for this year is, is really youth engagement and getting people involved. We, we do a great project with um, one of our sponsors, Travis Perkins and 1851, who's a, a, a sailing charity in Portsmouth. 
to try and get a thousand kids from the ports of various sailing during the event and during the summer. Yeah. And these aren't people that are part of sailing clubs, these are people from right across Portsmouth. Yeah. And we really just want to get people involved, get them excited about sailing, get yeah. them out on the water. So last year's event then, talking about uh, when we had it here in 2014, uh, 2015 even, um, what went on over that weekend for anybody that wasn't able to be there? Yeah, well, so we, I mean, first of all, we had, uh, it was the first time the America's Cup came back to Britain for around 160 years. So <laughs> it was a moment in history and it was a moment in history for Portsmouth. Um, we, we managed to sell the tickets and get huge numbers down. We had a concert in the evening on the Saturday. We had a, um, a sort of arrivals day on the Thursday for the teams and it was a bit of a preview day uh, where everyone came down, saw the cup arrival along the front and we had around, I think, 20,000 people in Portsmouth that day. <laughs> Friday, it was a beautiful sunny day. Yeah. Friday, the, the, wain, the rain came oh, in a bit no. and unfortunately we, we did have the red arrows planned to display, but unfortunately I had to cancel those guys. Well, but yeah. the, the practice racing still went ahead. Again, great numbers. And then the Saturday um, was just the best day I've ever seen for a sailing event. It was absolutely spectacular. A full grandstand, full race village, full uh, free area, and over two and a half thousand boats on the water watching the racing. So the, the, the audience was huge. It was yeah. absolutely amazing, and it was just the perfect day, really. If we could sell four of those days this year, we're, we're on to a winner. I bet the atmosphere was incredible. Yeah, it, it, I, yeah I mean, say, it really yeah. was. I mean, I mean, what made it even more special was that Land Rover BAR pulled it out and actually won the racing. Yeah, so won yeah. the day. Had the Duchess here on a Sunday doing yeah. the prize giving, so it was really special. Now, unfortunately, the, the one aspect is the British weather on the Sunday. Yeah, of course. It came in. I've never seen a day like that in July in my life. But um, you have to deal with those as an event and get on with it. Um, yeah. Huge numbers still came down for the day. Unfortunately, there was no racing, but they got to enjoy Portsmouth, the historic dockyard, and everything that Portsmouth yeah. has to offer. And there's there plenty of pubs and clubs for them to yeah. go to anyway. Yeah. And as a sport, it's, I, I find it incredible like, how popular it is around because it's so different mm. to supporting a football team or something like that, isn't it? The atmosphere and stuff. It's, it's, yeah. like, it's like it's got an atmosphere of its own, if you see what I mean. Yeah, it's, 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 it's entirely different now with, with these boats. You know, back in the day when you went to a sailing event, you, you wouldn't even think about having a race village because they'd, yeah. they'd, they'd go off from the, uh, the harbour and they'd go about 10 miles offshore. But now these guys are like metres away from shore, going 40 miles an hour, all out action. Yeah. They're absolute beasts on the boat. They're athletes. And it's, you know, really exciting to watch. So people can ca now come down. You don't have to be an expert in sailing. You can just come down, watch the action and be excited about it. Yeah, I, I just think it sounds awesome, doesn't it? Does, it does, yeah, like. definitely. Um, so was the event everything you expected it to be last year? Did it live up to your expectations? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was stressful, but all events are, and that's why we do it, because you want to be involved yeah. in those yeah. sort of things. It's stressful, but it's fun at the same time. Um, we, we just had different days for everything. We had sunny days, cloudy days, mm. a rainy day, the best day ever with the sun, with the wind. Classic British weather. And then the classic British weather to finish it off on the last <laughs> yeah. day. But this year, we're guaranteed great day, great weather every day. Fingers crossed. Go. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Uh, so thank you, Dan. What an incredible event to be a part of. We really have had a jam-packed show, and it's fascinating to see how much goes on behind the scenes in this incredible sport. And to think it's all happening right on your doorstep. Now, it was interesting to hear from the members of the sailing team about the best and worst parts of the sport, as well as how they got started. I was impressed to find out how much they train. Over the course of the show, we've looked at the history of the America's Cup, the facility here in Portsmouth, as well as what goes into making the team successful. We've also looked at the events that have taken place over the last year, with everyone here working their hardest to give the team the best chance of bringing the cup home. Now, with the events coming up this year, why don't we watch a preview, preview of what is to come? The America's Cup racing is officially underway here in Great Britain. things up let's speak to Dan Wilkinson one more time and find out about more events that are coming up and in particular the Louis Vuitton America's Cup World Series 2016 event happening right here in Portsmouth. Hello again Dan. Yeah, hello again. <laughs> well, yeah. We talked about all the events happening in Portsmouth for the last year what about the sailing events worldwide this year? Yeah, I mean, for the Land Rover BAR, they've, all, they've already competed in one America's Cup World Series this year in Oman. Oh, okay, they got yeah. back on form, they won that, so they're sort of topping the leaderboard or near, near the leaderboard again. 
In a couple of weeks, they're going to be in New York, a um, spectacular um, venue just by Manhattan on, on the Hudson wow. River there. It's going to be absolutely spectacular. So, you know, we fully expect them to win that event now. Do you, you get know. to go? Fortunately, I don't actually. I'm too busy with the Portsmouth event. But, so stuck here. Uh, yeah, I'm stuck. Yeah. Hey, it's a great place to be stuck. Yeah, lovely, place, yeah. Yeah. lovely weather, as you yeah. can see. Um, but uh, and then following that, in, in June, they've got an event in um, Chicago, uh, which is is it, actually going to be quite similar to the Portsmouth event. It's the sort of same sort of uh, area, the sailing, the look and feel, and the same sort of spectator, spectator numbers that are going to be down there. And then we're next up. So um, in July, the, from the, uh, the 21st to the 24th, um, all the teams are going to be coming over here to, to compete again in, in Portsmouth. Wow. I've also, a little birdie has told me that next year, the uh, cup final is held in Bermuda. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so the, the, the World Series, which is um, the event that happens in Portsmouth and has been, as I explained, the other events yeah. that are happening, that, that is essentially a seeding event for the, World, uh, for the actual America's Cup, which happens um, in Bermuda in 2017. So the, the team that wins the World Series here uh, carries two points over to the actual America's Cup um, proper, which is in Bermuda. They have a Challenger Series to start off with. Okay. Um, the boats change completely. These are boats that they, all the teams have designed themselves, slightly bigger, very much faster. Yeah. Um, and then those teams, uh, the, the five teams, uh, they sort of do the Challenger Series, and the winner of that then goes on to challenge the Oracle Team USA, who are the current champions of the America's Cup. So they yeah. take those guys on in the final of the America's Cup. Okay, um, with all the other teams as well, do you, um, is there rivalry? Like, do you hate some of them? <laughs> be honest, I just want to know if you don't like some of them. That's all. Is there a particular team you don't like? No, they're all good lads, to be honest, and they're all good teams, really well run teams. It's probably the best run America's Cup there's ever been, professional wise. They're all absolute athletes. A lot of them have been on teams together previously, but it's going to be probably the most competitive cup event we've yeah. ever seen, yeah. for sure. Can you steal any of them for your team? Yeah. Well, it has been known actually that uh, you know guys have come in late. You know, for instance, Ben. Um, yeah. So Ben Ainsley went into the Oracle team last, quite late, yeah. pulled on board and sort of won it for them. You know, I yeah. can say that on British, that happened. Yeah. Um, they won't say that. But, um, and, you know, that can happen. Transfers happen between teams. But I think, you know, now we're so close to the event, it's pretty much locked down. I want to know, um, what, what's your favourite memory since you started working? Because it's been amazing being here. And like, I've got to be honest, all the team look really happy and you look really happy yeah. with, like, you look really happy with life it. right now. <laughs> so what's been your favourite memory since you've worked here? Like, what, what's the best thing you've done? Uh, the best thing... It, I would say it's probably either working with the volunteers from Portsmouth, the, the wave makers, the, the, the volunteer at the event. Who are they? So um, for the event, we need uh, 350 volunteers to come down and actually help because the quantity of spectators yeah. that come Do you down. Do organise that as well? Yeah, so we organise the wave makers and it's a call to action for people in Portsmouth to come and volunteer, you know, par look after park and rides, help with advice for people that are coming down. Yeah. And just working with those people, they're so passionate about Portsmouth. It's like, it's, it's amazing to work with them. But I'd say, you know, the, the Saturday, of last year's event where BAR took the day um, we had you know 100,000 people on site two, two and a half thousand boats on the water just that atmosphere was absolutely amazing it was really you know it was a pleasure to work with that yeah I can only imagine and I guess, yeah <laughs> I guess I guess knowing that it's run by volunteers as well there must be so much passion because they're doing it because they love it not yeah. for any reason Definitely. so that, yeah, no, exactly. And, you know, and, and this year, those volunteers are going to be important. Again, as I say, we're running from the 21st to 25th of, uh, again, three races a day, we've got air shows every day. Yeah. We, we've got huge numbers of ticket buyers already and people coming down. So, you know, if you are, you know, in Portsmouth, you're thinking about it, you know, you need to be part of the action. Get online, get your ticket and come down. What's, so, oh. Sorry, you go. Okay. <laughs> um, what can the public expect to see changing and happening here in Portsmouth in the lead up to the America's Cup? Well, I just think, you know, that as last year, Portsmouth is a city, and as they do with everything, it's such a great, vibrant city to be part of. They'll just start getting behind the event. You know, we saw the, all the shops, all the windows in the shops changing and being passionate about the teams and wanting to sort of back the event. So I just think there'll be that, that change of, you know, just like when the Portsmouth Football Club starts doing well, and hopefully they'll get promoted this year. The, the, the city is, does a great job as a community to get behind these events. How can people find out all about the upcoming events and stuff like that for Portsmouth? Well, either follow us on Facebook, so we're on um, ACWS Portsmouth on Facebook or on the website, which is um, lvwsportsmouth.com. All the information's on there about how you can back the team, the ticketing that you can come down to. There's different levels. There's a free area. There's a paid ticketed area. Um, kids are free under five. It's half price for teenagers. So there's loads of different ways you can come and back us. So just follow us on Facebook, follow yeah. us on the website, get all the details. What are you most looking forward to this year? And if there are people that watch this show and want to volunteer, how can they get involved? I'm most looking forward to this year is BAR winning the event again because of course that's going to happen. Know, yeah. you know, they're they're going to win every day, <laughs> every race. You know, no <laughs> pressure, guys. Um, you know, the, just just people coming down and getting into a sport they've probably never seen before. It's like 
you know, sailing's one of those events that hasn't had these crowds before. And, you know, the team being here, it, it's great for Portsmouth, the amount of people that are going to come down. So that's exciting. And for the volunteers, um, we've got Airbus involved as, as a local partner. So, you know, just we've got a, a volunteers, managers, all the details are on the website. The application closes in two weeks. Yeah. We're almost at capacity. We've almost got 350 applications wow. already. But you know, if you are interested, please please apply and, and, and we'll get back to you. Sounds like a great opportunity. People so should you, definitely go for it. Yeah. So you did a live show last year as well, didn't you? So will there be a live show this year? Yep. So there's a live show throughout the race village and with um, people on stages, and also Land Rover BAR do a morning show every day, which you can watch through their website. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Georgie Thompson, the ex Sky presenter, presents that. So it's a it's a great show. So. Yeah. And what about the evening show? Yeah. The um, Portsmouth Live show, no, this year there will be no music event. So okay. it's one, one thing we brought, it, 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 it was something we tested last year, um, but actually we, 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 our feedback from um, post event was actually people loved the racing, loved the sport, loved the sailing. Um, and we want to concentrate on that. That was what the biggest success. The music show was brilliant, but actually people, it was something extra we were selling and not something that was essential to the actual event. So we've concentrated on the sport. We've got air shows each day, we've got the Red Arrows on the Friday, the Red Bull Matadors on the Saturday and the Blades on the Sunday. So there's, there's action every day. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. I cannot <laughs> thank you enough, Dan, for coming in and speaking to us today. So it's much, been really, really, really good. It. Also, not just Dan, but thank you to all our guests who joined us on the show. It really has been amazing. We've been lucky enough to find out more about the world of professional sailing, the history of the Cup, and even to speak to some of the staff and members that work here at Land Rover BAR team based here in Portsmouth. Hopefully, you've learned a little and want to find out more about professional sailing. Unfortunately, we have come to the end of our show. We hope you've enjoyed discovering the ins and the outs of the British Challenger Land Rover, Land Rover BAR as much as we have. Please don't hesitate to get in touch with us via Twitter at CCITV. TV or on facebook.com slash CCI channel. And if you want to watch the show again, you can find us on youtube.com slash CCI TV channel. And a big thank you to everyone here at Land Rover BAR for their help during the production of this show. As previously mentioned, you can discover more about the America's Cup World Series Portsmouth and the British Challenger by going to their official website, which is on the screen now. And make sure you check out the Facebook and Twitter where you can keep up to date and get the latest information on the team and the upcoming events. And don't forget to show your support for our home team <laughs> by tweeting with the hashtag BringTheCupHome. Yes. Thanks very much. Thank Bye, you. guys. Bye, everyone. Bye.